this one is uh is just a dome where I used uh, got a little mushroom in there and then a uh, this is a copper coil that kind of directs energy both ways. They call it a, a Mobius flow coil. And uh, but there's you kind of see like the pattern in here. There's like uh, I'll get a little close there. Yeah, you'll see like the they call it the flower life pattern underneath underneath the mushroom there. That's uh, basically a composition of redwood bark and Arkansas quartz. And that was just by choice of just what I wanted to use for contrasting colors, and it just happened to look cool and. But the Arkansas quartz is one thing I use as like a base um, ingredient all the time in all my organite. Like the simplest one will contain at least that and at a minimum uh, brass. Or I've been also working with this stuff, uh, iron iron oxide, which is pretty much this pretty much like black powder awesomeness for absorbing absorbing EMF. It's 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 something that like just sucks it up like a vacuum. So like EMF electromagnetic frequency is something that's like put off like even your your wall outlets coming out of your, your house you can measure trace um like millivolts coming out of those things. They have an ambient kind of feel just resonating out of them. And then, and then especially the uh the fluorescent lights though, those things you can actually take little little volt gauge things that met a measure static voltage and get a little bit out of it but I don't know. The idea, though, is uh, with the with the crystals and the resin, like I was saying, um, um, with the, with the with the iron oxide and the brass, I like to kind of combine those brasses. Is known to kind of have like a more human energy, where you get into silvers and golds, and they're like really super high vibe, and which is nothing wrong with that. It's super good for healing and stuff. But sometimes I like to just be very calming and earth earth like energies with with what I'm doing. So I'll stay with just like the basic ore and. Um, but yeah, basically like for this this guy for instance, you know, at one time was complete liquid. It was like a three layer process making this guy and and uh usually pour like a little window layer on the front there to get it nice clear so you can have see kind of see. It's mostly for aesthetics. If I was doing something for pure function, I would just put all the stuff in one mixture in one cup and it would just come out as as just a mixture of stuff and you wouldn't really have any arrangement, but I kind of like to take it to the next level and make it look cool and I think uh, with the power of intention things are a little bit different than just doing things for production and 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 money and things like that and I don't know I feel like when it's done for the right reason people notice it and people are definitely affected by it and that's one thing I've been really uh, inspired by once again and but yeah here's a here's a pyramid I've been working with these little uh hollow one Let's see if I have a flashlight to put under it it's got a lighter yeah yeah But yeah, like, uh, I don't know, they say like pyramids are, are good for, get a little bit closer there. Pyramids are good for uh, like charging things, you know, and uh, they say just, I don't know, I don't know about the whole like a razor blade getting sharp under a pyramid, a pyramid. I haven't experimented with that one yet, but um, I don't know, just that idea. I was like, oh, why don't I make it hollow and you put stuff under there and, and protect it, whether it be like some kind of gem or something you feel like needs to be recharged or anything, but uh yeah, my biggest my biggest passion though uh, with the orgone is is the wire wrap uh, pendants. Yeah, these guys. Kind of see you get the right angle there. Yeah, it took like the flower life pattern. This is like a three layer process and that resin casting as well. Well, this one has Arkansas quartz, uh, California black tourmaline, which is also known. For as a good uh, EMF protector, um, or I'll use shungite too, which is uh, this really awesome mystery stone that was found uh, pretty much directly above the pyramids of Giza in Russia in this lake where they think it might have been like a meteorite or something that landed there, and uh, I guess apparently the military had experimented with it because um, it's like a carbon-60 uh, molecule or whatever, which is really good for like restructuring like chaotic fields or whatever, and they tried to spray paint it on some of the stealth bombers in the military, so it's kind of kind of happy about that i was like well if they're doing that then i'm gonna i'm gonna use this for some, <laughs> some super awesome healing properties you know and yeah so i don't know it's, it's just one thing i i noticed it went turbocharged i think with with the iron oxide and the shungite and all those things you know outside of just using quartz quartz and metal you know as, as the base working function of uh, borgone energy um but yeah like i said once again it's like the the, the whole um, thing that makes this function really work is uh, the fact that the polyester resin is, is acts as like an organic highway between the crystals and the metal. Compression 
super compression happens with the crystal, quartz crystal, no matter how much you crush it up, it still retains its its duty function of, of carrying this earth-like rhythm, you know, with the millions of years it took to grow some of these things. Um, but yeah, being crushed up into even a powder, it still re retains its complete ability, but spread out in even more of a better, like, duty function, where if you have just, like, one spear, it's just going to be, like, kind of direct, and it's not really going to, it's not going to have the power and the intensity that it could really have as far as, like, this soft distribution. That's why I really like working with these dome shapes, because they just have that awesome, like, especially for healing, you know, laying on or putting them anywhere on the body, you know, and I've even made some with, like, uh, massage handles and stuff for people and they've oh neat yeah like uh take like a martini glass uh shape kind of a mold or whatever and just basically mold this shape with that and kind of fuse them together then totally you won't even see the seam or nothing you know and they can just like hold it in their hand and just work into get like the perfect bump on it and it's just like the most awesome massage tool it's, uh -huh. it's kind of cool i need to like really get those in production people like those a lot <laughs> yeah are there any stones that uh you don't like working with that. Um, I, I guess, I don't know, if, well, I mean, I guess the only one I don't like working with, um, as far as, um, like anything like polished or tumbled, um, rocks that are bigger than like my pinky, pretty much like that, that big. Um, cause what'll happen is the expansion contraction rate of a, that crystal is different than the resin. And what'll happen is a, maybe on a super cold day is that crystal will, will shrink a little bit, uh, excuse me, the resin will shrink a little bit smaller on a super nano level than the than the than the crystal or the tumbled stone or whatever and you know create like an air gap between the because it is resin it's kind of like a it's basically derived off of like a tree uh, a decom decomposing trees like a turkish gum tree i believe it was was the most predominant in these fields where they find like basically decomposing trees and like the, it'd be basically like somehow filtered out to get the clarity or whatever you know it's like they consider it's basically like surfboard resin and stuff and there has been a confusion where a lot of people think there's like this is like plastic, but it's like resin resonates plastic. And it's not the same thing. It's like you can I don't know you can feel it in your hand. It's but a lot of people you know they kind of like will throw that at me. And I was like no, nope. there's a whole kind of like study about uh -huh. the compression property of you know just what what it does. And it's just like a, I don't know William William Reich was this guy in the 50s that kind of discovered the uh, the field and he was doing like post trauma therapy on um, people coming back from the war. He was like a psycho psychoanalyst and stuff and was like really wondering what was going on with people's energy fields apparently and just kind of got into that and built like a box thing that people could sit in and it was like concentrated orgone energy. So so basically like positive orgone energy would be like um, like negative ions or where like positive ions would be flying off of like a cell phone tower or anywhere in a house with electric stuff turned on. Like so like ideally you want to be at like for healing at the base of a waterfall or on like the the coastline of a beach or something like that where there's a lot of the water is basically hitting oxygen and it's it's creating this these negative ions and that's like that's like the essential life force energy that it takes for like even like single celled organisms like you know like to spawn and grow and like and, and start their thing and stuff but like if you have like a cell phone tower around like like a tree or stuff you know it's like it might still be growing but it's like it's only going to reach like a certain like ability and then like yeah, I've had friends that have had like like wire net, excuse me, internet wireless connection wires like going around plants or whatever. I'm like, yeah, what are my plants like dying or just not doing all that well? I'm like, I don't know, it's kind of silly, but yeah, you should definitely not be sleeping near your wireless internet connection hub thing that you have for your house. You know, it's like keep that kind of like, yeah, in an area. But yeah, that's kind of why I make these things is for people to put those things in that area and stuff and and see if it helps them. You know, I have a lot of hypersensitive kind of people that are a little more like a lot more sensitive that to the ambient fields than I am you know but like I know that even on my cell phone like I have a hard time being on a, uh, a phone call for more than 15 minutes on one side of my I feel like I'm constantly having to switch and it's like is it the because I'm here the way the sound is going to my head is it's like no it's it's there's some kind of like frequency thing going on I don't know I truly feel it and but I had this one friend that literally she lived in a tree and was like very like kind of like in touch with nature for a long time you know and uh loved kids and everything and had two of her own and over time she eventually um got into working with kids and in, in school and stuff and had like a laptop working with it all the time and she came up to me and she knew that i was into this craft and she was like oh you know you gotta help me i need something to put on this computer and figure out what to 
it just feels like it's eating me alive, you know. I'm like, okay, I'll figure out something. But I made like these little super thin dome ones that are, you know, super subtle. They're not really crazy, but they're just packed full of the, you know, the shungite or the iron oxide, the really good stuff for absorbing that EMF. And I was like, well, let's find your antenna on your computer, you know, where the actual like signal is pumped out, where because you know, it's different computers have different spots. And then, uh, and then basically we found that, and I just. Stand it, glued it right on there, you know, and I was like, well, let me know what happens, you know, I, I put one on my computer, you know, but I don't want to be too, like, wooed out about it, you know, is it actually doing anything or not, and, and she, I mean, she said it's literally like a vacuum cleaner came through and it was just, like, softened the blow, she's like, there was definitely something still there, but there was, like, it was like a shock absorber really helped out a lot, you know, and I was like, I don't know, it just, it meant a lot to me, and then, but the biggest thing more than what any adult has ever said is what some of the kids have said, because, like, I feel like they're, they're, innocence or in no sense or whatever just like that pure like just purity of just seeing a situation like I've had my um, pyramids and stuff at different like on an art walk in Portland Alberta art walk um, I had them out there and I had like the, these two kids come up and they both had their hands out like they saw these beams of light and on their own account just looking directly at these pyramids like they wanted like they saw it you know and I was like wow that is really something special like I just I just that confirmation just really kind of hit home for me and it's like maybe there's some light energy coming off these. If for now, I'll just make them look cool. But if they don't do anything, they don't do anything. But like that's why kind of the main thing where I got into this. I was like, okay, but at least I'm just making something that looks cool, you know. And you know, the whole idea of like trying to convince people whether or not like it actually you know, like absorbs the energy, you know, and, and does this or that. But like what I'm trying to explain, and 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 if that doesn't make sense, you know then go home and worship your computer more because it's literally built around the quartz crystal and the piezoelectric effect that is created out there. Like everything in your computer worships the crystal. Like without that, you know, just like in, you know, any joking movie, you know, in the time machine, you need to have the crystals. <laughs> no, that's just kind of funny. But like, I don't know, just the idea of, uh, it just, I don't know. There, there's a lot of information and stuff. I've uh, definitely researched about it, but uh, I'm just doing it for fun for now, and that's my passion, and I'm sticking to it. And, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I've uh, definitely gotten a good response from people. I, uh, so I'm going to keep doing it. And the wire wrapping thing is something I really like, is making personal pendants and custom ones. I've made a lot for people, uh, like, you know, where I incorporate, like, a loved one's ashes, even, you know, or something really crazy. Anything organic, you know, that kind of, like, like flows like uh like I say like I use redwood bark in this one that's a really common one for me because I just feel like the redwoods to me are like one of those really grounded forests you know just super just old just been there for a while and it's been protected thankfully and yeah it's uh good stuff all uh I mean everything from magnetic sand from the mouth of the Columbia River Mount St Helens ash uh, white sage I'll put all sorts of crazy earth earthly elements in there because I think that's a big part of it. It carries the essence, you know, everything else is kind of like the more of the duty function. But, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, you paint, like, abstract the uh, stuff. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I would consider um, the, the paintings in the, in the background necessarily abstract. Of, it's like the, this, for instance. Patterns. Is, and yeah, like this, for instance, is an example of the flower life. A lot, a lot of people are familiar with it. It's finally been kind of surfacing, and people are a little more like uh, understanding of it. You know, the, this is basically kind of like I mean, look like a beach or whatever. I, I call this painting sea level. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, basically, um, the flower life, all platonic solids that are like essentially made up of like every shape you can imagine kind of sources out of this. And this is, once again, just like a two-dimensional version of what's kind of like everywhere, cubed and wrapped around. Spheres of that are like everywhere. It's like, I don't know. It's it's something I've definitely uh, experienced under meditation. And I don't know. I, I truly resonate with the flower life, especially when you learn the, um, the proper process of doing it with a compass, you know, like the like in the, the, the Masonic lodges. That was one thing that that they would t teach us how to uh, fundamentally do like the flower life and how to properly draw shapes, you know, and like drawing the center circle, then dropping down, and then ending always always going left or right as seen from above. The energy flows, the light flows down left or right, and not that going you know backwards is bad, but it's just a reminder of like like when you activate your day, it's kind of like one of the Tibetan rights was was spinning to the right three times really quick it's like the idea was bringing light down into your day or whatever but like when it comes to geometry and stuff like 
uh, drawing left to right or uh, down to up, but never up to down.